Yeah, I think that uh, that plays with recruits in terms of the history of the program. I mean, I think it's absolutely something that we can promote and talk about. Um, you know, I think year to year things change, but historically, you know, if a guy's interested in playing in the NFL, we got we got what he's looking for, and we can back it up with numbers. Right. Jim, now that you've been through, you know, the first bring here, what are the biggest things you look at that we need to accomplish over the next few months to get ready for the season? Um, you know, I, I really uh, have just been impressed with our whole process from Coach Day to Coach Mick. Um, we just need to stay the course. Those guys know what they're doing in terms of how to structure uh, this time of year. Stay the course in that aspect. and. Um, from a, a defensive perspective, we need to just continue to uh, meet whenever we have the chance, individually and groups when we're allowed. You know, the schedule dic dictates all of that, but we'll take advantage of, of every opportunity we have just to have short meetings, again, to keep things fresh in their mind and maybe grow in some areas that we weren't able to touch in the spring. Now that you've had a chance to look at the film, from the spring. What do you think they most took away from what you were trying to get from that You know, they um, were able to learn that we do a lot of things that, um, but it's, it's simple, but yet it looks complex, you know, and I think they were able to get into the heart of it and uh, get excited about it and say, okay, we can, we can show a lot of different looks, but it was, easy for them to learn, you know, so that it can be overwhelming in the beginning because it looks like a lot, but when you get into the nuts and bolts of it, um, they were able to follow along at a rapid pace, and that's a credit to our to our players, too. I mean, they're, they, they soaked it up, and they really wanted to learn, and I think now they got a taste of like, how good the system can work. From an installation standpoint, are you where you thought you'd be? Are you ahead of schedule? Where would you say you're at right now? Yeah, I... I I think we got accomplished more um, than I could have hoped for. I think our players were uh, very open to the process, very eager to learn, and they picked things up at a, a rapid pace. I, I was really impressed with the guys we have in their football intelligence. Yeah, you talked a little bit about the NFL draft. I'm curious, I, I know you've only spent a spring with Brian Hartline, but what are your impressions of him? Because you had two Buckeyes and three Jamison Williams, who went in the first round. It's been a while since Ohio State had that. What are your impressions of Brian Hartline? What is his work ethic like? What does he say now? He's great. I mean, he's the best in the country, and that shows up. You know, there's a saying in our business, what you see is what you coach. So, you know, there's there's nobody uh, better than him in terms of the product that he puts on the field. Um, I love the way he dresses. He's a snappy dresser, and he looks sharp. And he just—he he just looks like you want a uh, uh, a great wide receiver coach and, and offensive coach to look. And I'm glad to be on his team. Is there still a lot to sort out at linebacker? Yeah, I think that in terms of the actual uh, playing time, you know, who's who's going to get uh, you know the majority of the snaps. You know, I think there's a lot of good candidates, um, but how how that's all going to shake out in terms of who plays the most, who has some uh, specialty things that they can do and help the team, packaging, where they can go. I still think there are there's a lot to be determined in terms of the actual snaps and rep counts that come up in the game. Might be kind of a loaded question, but when you look at the offense. Does this defense feel pressure to produce a national championship or defense right out of the game? No, uh, we feel no. We, we we first of all, I don't I don't think the players feel any pressure in that because they believe and they're confident and they, they they've seen how the whole system works and, and, and the quality of our program. Um, challenge for us is just to be the best we can be. I mean, that, that's all, you know. If we're the best we can be, we'll be fine. So we just have to get better every day. That's what I keep, I say get better, they say every day. It's one of our sayings, they say it back to me. And that's all we have to worry about. So I don't think anybody
everybody feeling pressure, just excited. How do you make sure they get better every day when you can't see them every day? This is their first kind of time away from you guys when they come back in the summer. Right, you gotta have, you have to have faith. You know, I, I, uh, I try to tell them that they're Olympic athletes. I mean, they're the best of the best. So, you know, you're right. A lot of that happens privately, and, and I have to trust that they're doing all the right things to, to keep making progress. You saw uh, Mitchell Melton suffered injury in the spring game. Are you expecting him back in the fall? I think it's going to be tough. I mean, I don't have the uh, total answer on that, but um, he's a great kid, and I'm just, I'm just sad for him. What are some of the traits of your defensive philosophy that you're most proud of? I mean, you talked a lot about things like confusing the opposing offense, the uh, confusing the quarterback, not making people comfortable. What's your toughness as a trait? What are, what are some traits about the general defense that you're most proud of? Let's stand out for us. Yeah, um, I think the... Uh, Pursuit and by you know, everybody, every defense wants to be great pursuing the football. But I call it smart swarm. I think our angles, you know, guys understanding uh, the field, understanding where their help is, you know, that it's a, it's a, it's an eleven man game, and, and taking great angles to the football is something I think you can see when you watch a game. You know, um, there's a right way and a wrong way to miss a tackle because you will miss, but if you're on the right angle, you know, good things can still happen. So I think the way uh, that a fan or anyone can watch our defense just be in the right place, understand the plays they're getting. Um, I think the way we adjust is, 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 is a trademark of what we do. You know, that if, if something's hurting us, that we fix it. You know, and I think that's my job. I have to do that. We have a system, and that's how we built it, so that we can adjust when we have to adjust. And then, yeah, I like to think of uh, pressure as a trademark of the system, and that's not necessarily just through blitzing, um, but it's also through just making the quarterback um, take a little time, extra time to read, that it gives our guys a chance to rush. Jim, building on that, I mean, that's what you talk about. You know, you do it, you, it's not something you can manufacture, we can you do it by how you build the system from the start. And, and you're constantly uh, practicing that and start offense. You know, it's, it's, we got a great offense, so you can get feedback from them and what are you seeing? How how are you seeing it? And that helps us grow. I don't go against that, but that's just something you build from the start. Either you have that philosophy or you don't. Some guys are like, hey, we're just going to line up and we're going to go toe to toe with you, and um, you know, see who the better the better team is. Um, we have more of a philosophy of, of being creative, being different, showing different looks, and that allows. That just gives our guys that extra step now, and we have great players, so all I'm trying to do is get them that extra step um, in the play to be able to succeed. I'm sure watched the video of last year, and so many times, the pass rush was a split second away. Maybe crush the quarterback, or maybe step away from the yeah, I didn't. I didn't focus on that a lot with what happened last year. Um, that's not my job. My job is to focus on this year. But yeah, I think you see that in the game of football that the difference between the pressure or non-pressure is a half step. And when you have talented players, I think of it as my job, either through disguise or making the quarterback hold the ball or freeing a guy up, giving him a head start. Those are all the areas that I have to work on to help our guys get in. So the way your job is going to be hours and hours and hours to work. That's right. That's right. That's what, that's what I call playing offense on defense. Jack Sawyer, what do you expect out of, out of him this year? Everything. I expect, I, I expect Jack to be able to do everything, to be able to play um, any of the defensive end positions, to be able to uh, play our Jack position, to uh, learn the system well enough to to move into that Leo role. I, I think he's got uh, great potential. I like his attitude. Um, I like his toughness. So I, I just expect him to, to 
continue the work he did in the spring and be great. Same thing with JT too. In a while, what do you expect that coach? Everything. I mean, JT. These are guys. These are these are guys that do not have limitations. They do not have limitations. And uh, and, and it's my job to grow them, to put them into the different positions to succeed, to to be able to utilize their skills to the fullest. But there's no limits on their success. Jim, when you take those two guys and you have veterans like Zach coming back. You want to start seniors probably in most cases, or at least they did on the spring game. You said afterwards, it doesn't matter. How do you get guys to buy into that? Well, I'm sure that they really want to just be a start. That's, that's an accomplishment. Right. I know that that's important, but I think when you're playing a lot of guys, which we plan to do, you know, then, it, then being the starter just becomes an ego thing. When you're playing a lot of guys, and, um, you know, you, you saw it uh, last year at Oklahoma State, you know, when our, our leading sacker wasn't even the starter, you know, so that's, that's, that's what I'm preaching and I'm selling is the productivity. And when guys are having success, you know, that uh, ego thing of who's the starter tends to be less important. What did you see from Zach? I, think, I, I mean, I love Zach's attitude, his length. You know, I saw um, a, a lot of uh, domination at the point of attack. You know, a guy, a guy who really holds point, and um, he's got a great personality, great energy, and he's going to be a great leader for us. You talk about this good year. Zach, Zach Harris. Oh yeah, because how do you play that though with, with the older guys and stuff? Because like you said a while ago. Uh, starting is more of like a, maybe an ego thing or anything else, but you want chemistry in that group and stuff. Do you, do you, are you the kind of guy that just lays out the way things are? This is the way things are. How do you approach those kind of like challenges? Yeah, I don't. I don't. You're right. I just say this is how this is what we're doing. Um, you know, it's the greatest team game there is. I mean, you you spend you know 365 days a year lifting weights and and. and getting up at 6 a.m. and all that, that we're, we want to put on the field the best product that's going to help us win to deliver success. And I'm going to put you in position uh, to be successful. That's my job, to make all that hard work come to fruition. So I, I just say this is the way it is. I don't I don't even address that unless there's a specific, if, if, if a guy has a specific issue, then we'll sit down and talk about it. But otherwise, it's team, team, team. That's just the way we talk. Can you give us a name or two, especially after watching the video from the spring scrimmage, et cetera, but is there one guy that defensively just really jumped up the chart for you that I, you hold him as like an example of making gains, making improvements, using the spring to the to its utmost from the standpoint of improvement, et cetera? Yeah. I, you know, that's difficult for me to do because I just got here. So, I, I, you know, and I tried to just be and have a completely open mind with where guys were at, you know, because I, I didn't try to take into account anything from the past. But um, I would say because I, I work with them too a lot, Tommy Eichelberg, I thought, did a, just a heck of a job because um, I threw a lot at him and I'm very demanding on those linebackers. Um, to learn it and learn it right now. And I just thought he picked everything up. His football intelligence was great. And um, he seemed to really understand the system. And, you know, from start to finish, he figured things out. I'm curious about some of the true freshmen that came over with like you guys on defense. Katie Curry, um, CJ Hicks, uh, Jair Brown, some of those guys, Ryan Turner, Ty Stokes. Um, did, he, did any of those guys stand out to you? Yeah, they all did. I mean, they, they, all, they all did. I mean, you know, Kai had, had really made progress at the end there in, in, in the spring game. Um, but they all stood out in some way. I think it's a great crew. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty demanding on those guys. And then I, every now and then I have to stop myself and say, oh, this guy shouldn't be at the senior prom right now. You know what I mean? That's yeah. the way. But, I mean, I, I, I push, push, push on those guys too. And I, and I thought they handled it well. And the big thing was they were able to take coaching. You know, they were able to take coaching. Aiden had a lot of great pass rushes, you know, and so they were able to take coaching, and when you have a young guy who can take coaching um, and has yeah. talent, you got a chance. But CJ, hey. since he's in your room and you're around him, what do you like about his spring? I, I mean, he, he, um, he's still figuring things out because 
it's not like, you know, our linebackers, that's just, they're, they're very multiple. It's not just, hey, you're in this place, you're doing that. You're doing a lot of different things, which is good for them when they go to the next level. But he's still figuring things out. But when, when, I, when he was able to cut loose and play fast, I was really impressed with his with his feet and uh, you know his, his ability to get from point A to point B in short space explosiveness. Really impressed with that. Did you see the light maybe start to come on as practices went on? Absolutely. Yeah. He 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 really. Um, you could see he he got better from the beginning to end. And uh, Gabe worked. Gabe Powers. He worked extremely hard at learning too. So. We throw a lot at those guys, but they did a good job of, of, of picking it up. You mentioned the linebacker spot. I mean, looking at your defenses in the past, it seems like those guys, especially those outside backers, are kind of stat eaters. <laughs> you know, like a lot of times they're in the middle of everything. And I'm curious, what makes that position valuable, especially with all the attention being on the Jack and then the safety-driven defense and things like that? What makes a linebacker in your defense so valuable? Well, he's, you know, he, he has to be multiple. You know, the idea of being an inside or outside linebacker, because you're going to see them both inside and outside. You're going to see them in man coverage and zone coverage. You're going to see them blitz inside. You're going to see them blitz outside. So a guy who um, has um, has all kinds of football skills, one, that's important. But two, the mental understanding, and that's why they do get a lot of stats because we put them in position to, to make plays, you know. And, and a lot of times we funnel things to them, you know, and the safeties and their – and they're there, um, and, and they got to get the job done. So they have to understand the scheme and where they're at. Was that a new concept, like something that they weren't used to when when you arrived, or is that something that they were like, okay, this is normal for me, but this is the way I like to do it? I, I don't know. You'd have to ask them, but I I, I think that um, they liked it, okay. you know, because we talk a lot about free tackles, and that's a great thing for a linebacker. You know, a lot of times. You're going to have a chance to make that tackle without a blocker. That's what we want, right? That's good for a linebacker. You spoke earlier, or after the spring game, about Kyle Stokes right. stepping up and stuff, and that's important for that room, almost from a number standpoint. Anything else? Do you, do you feel like you have a decent complement in the safety room? Um, yeah, run? I mean, it, we have. I think we have some number issues there, right? I mean, I think there are, there are um, there's going to be opportunities for a young guy like Kai to have immediate impact in the depth. So it was good to see him make progress and we're, we're going to need him uh, to step up. Because of Did you leave the spring though with a, a solid two deep in your mind about at the, at the safety spot? At the safety spot? Yeah. Could you? Yeah, I mean, no, it's not, no, I, no I, I think it's just still a work in progress. You know, it's all I'm going to say. Let me ask you players for the jack position. Um, obviously there are people who are doing it now, but when you're looking for high school history, like, are you more likely to look at linebackers that turn into that or defensive line when you're trying to recruit that position? Yeah, a lot of times in high school, it because it's, it's more of a linebacker type because uh, high schools, are, they're going to play their, their D linemen are going to be bigger guys, you know, more projected to be, to be regular D linemen. So uh, most of the time, it's more of a line. Kate Curry, go back for a second. Yeah. I asked Ryan Day about him on signing day way back in that. He seems to have like a lot of things going for him, including that nasty streak. I don't know if that's the right word you would use, but what just jumped out at you from the get-go about this young man? Um, his first step. I think his first step. Uh, some of the things I saw him do in pass rush, turning the corner, really impressive. You know, and then. Um, yeah, he's kind of surly, you know, uh, a little bit um, in that, uh, a lot like Jack, you know, I mean, those guys seem to be, you know, and I, and I like that kind of personality, so, yeah, he's got a quick first step, and he's, and he's a little surly, that, that equals uh, potential greatness. Is he a Philly guy? Nah, he's a Philly guy, yeah, he could be a Philly guy. <laughs> when, when you mentioned, sorry to go back to the linebackers, but when you, when you mentioned the multiplicity and things like that, is that something that you can see, like, do you project on a high school recruits, or is that something that, I mean, they're kind of already expected to do as a little bit of everything? No, I mean, you have to project it. You do. you got to project it. you got to just uh, take an inventory of the guy's skills and then get to know him to understand his demeanor, his football intelligence, 
Um, but it's something to project because it's not a typical in our system, not a typical, hey, you're an inside linebacker, you're an outside linebacker. You got to be able to do everything. So it is more of a projection. Is it like big picture? Of yeah, the, of big the entire absolutely. Game? Yeah. Right. Where does it, how, how much football does a guy understand? How do you feel about the interior defensive board? I feel great. I feel great. Like it, it, it's uh, there, there's a, there's a lot of guys competing. There's a lot of guys who show the ability to make plays. Guys who have experience. Um, I think it's just a great mix. You know, it's good. We're going to be able to do a lot of good things. I think Teron is, is going to be great. I mean, he's, um, he's got experience, like you said, but he was um, showed great leadership, great attitude, you know, open to the process, wanting to learn the new system, and he's smart. You know, he picked things up quickly, so I think this guy's the winner. And Ty Leak's a guy, Tyler Jones a guy, they have really haven't had around here like defensive tackle, bigger defensive tackle, most of the new tackles who have been right around three hundred pounds. What, what do you think he can bring to the table this year? I, I think he has a presence in there, like you said, that is um, a little bit different, that's really effective for what we do. Um, you know, I, I think he's going to function really well in the system. We'll be able to put him in places, you know, that, that fit his skills. Been around for a while. Is it, is finding that a gap dude that can attack that's huge that has good feet? Is that as tough in the recruiting world as finding a quarterback that's stellar? I mean, how would you describe it? I don't know. I mean, I've been, I have been um, less of size and spacey more than than just really first step and quickness and, and you know attacking mentality. You know, so uh, those guys are always hard to find. But I think I always have erred to the side of being um, more aggressive, kind of like Mike. You know, like, I mean, I thought he did some great things for you know at that position. You know, he he gets off the ball fast, and, he, and and to me that creates as as much problems as some dude who's just sitting in there at 350 and can't be moved. It deal with this, right? It's more my personality. If you have a, if you can find the rare guy, as Tim said, who is 330 or 340 or 350, but has the athleticism or has the step too, what does that do for you? I mean, Georgia had a couple of those guys last yeah. year. They are rare, but what is it? Do? it I mean, it changes everything, right? Because now you can always count on the double team, so you yeah. can program. Okay, they're going to have to double team this guy, and now you can program someone else to be free because you know they're going to have to commit too. You know, and and when you can find that. It's great for all the surrounding areas of the defense. And as Dave was saying, like Ty League, a, a little bit of that, maybe that kind of potential. That we'll see. He's got potential. Size. Absolutely, he has potential. You know, we got to we got to go out there and prove it. Coach, can I show totally different? Uh, what is it like wearing this badge, the uh, Ohio State badge? Like I'm, I'm seeing these tweets showing you in, in Marlin, Texas. You and I maybe don't be people know Marlin. Is. Right. Manny, Louisiana, same thing. Uh -huh. But when you, I'm not trying to get you to spare team play else, but let me ask you this. What is it wearing the Ohio State badge? Does it get you in places too? Where people know where you're coming from? Yeah, I mean, you know, high school coaches are great. They, they, they try to treat, uh, you know, all of us uh, the same. They really do because the, the opportunities for their players. But, yeah, there is a, there is a special pride for me to now be at – elite school, you know, at Ohio State, you know, I mean, you can joke, you can joke with your buddies when you walk around, you know, because, you know, when, when they show up, you'd be like, hey, step aside, you know, yeah. Ohio State's here, you know, you can say, the guys, the guys who know you, you can joke, but we, we all know it's true, you know, when you were sitting there at the lower level, like, hey, look at that guy from Ohio State, you know, he just gets right in, yeah. so now I get to wear it, like, I, I tell the recruits, look, it took you it took you 16, however old they are now, right? 16, 17, sometimes 15. It took you 16 years to get here. It took me 56 years to get here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let's go. Let's go be great together. But I, it's definitely um, a lot of fun. Let me follow up with that though, too. With the transfer portal, but also the name, image, and likeness stuff that's going on right now. Now they're trying to. How wild is it out there in the recruiting world? You know, we're just, we're just paying attention to the stories that are coming back to us. How crazy is it? Is it you know, I think we're I, yeah, I think we're just starting to see the effects, right? Everybody yeah. is kind of like, what's going to happen? Where it's going to go? I don't think anybody knows. You know, we don't know. 
and um, you know, for me, uh, you, you know, that's it's kind of. I mean, there are, we have a lot of people that are going to look into that. For like, when you when I face those situations and there's a lot of uncertainty, all I can think of is work. You know, I just want to put blinders on. I just want to work on the, on on recruiting this kid, this area, wherever I'm at. I want to work on the defense because all of that other stuff, when it gets in your mind, it can really affect, you know, because now you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And there's a lot of uncertainty. And um, I like to say that's above my pay grade, and I, and I just want to do my job. You but, know? You gotta be, but you got to be getting questions out of the you get, prospects and go, yeah, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. They don't, you know, prospects don't bring it up with us a lot. I think they're, you know, um, I think that's all going to roll out and come, you know, to fruition. Um, however it's supposed to happen you know we're not supposed to be involved in it so yes. you know I, I try to um, not be involved in it you know I try to you know like hey I don't know you know we'll see we'll see what's gonna happen and, and um, it's not my area I think the more us as coaches play around with it you know it can really be dangerous it can really you be talked, dangerous you talked earlier about what you were happiest with the team I'm curious you know you've coached for a long time 